Hi, so I'm Ellie. I'm an archaeologist at the University of Aberdeen on the NERC funded Quadraft Doctoral Training Partnership in the first year of my PhD. So I'm going to be looking at using drone based survey to mitigate the impacts of climate change on archaeological heritage. So because I'm in my first year, I'll be talking about plans rather than having much in the way of results to present. But my background is with uh, the Scape Trust, Scottish Coastal Archaeology and the Problem of Erosion, which is based at the University of St Andrews with the remit of researching the archaeology of Scotland's coast, especially where it's threatened by erosion. So I'll be drawing on this both uh, in my talk today and for the PhD project in general. So the project is largely coastally focused. So I'll be looking at climate driven coastal change and impacts on archaeological sites and landscapes, because this is the problem we're facing. Um, erosion and natural coastal processes have always affected the coast and are already affecting the archaeological sites. But with sea level rise already outpacing, isostatic readjustment and accelerating, climate change impacts are going to amplify and accelerate those processes, so the problem is going to get worse. Meanwhile, of course, a lot of our heritage is at the coast because of the nature of the Scottish landscape and history of settlement and the attractiveness of coastal areas for occupation and activity. So in terms of past work on the Scottish coast, I'm sure many of you in this audience are aware of Dynamic Coast, the National Coastal Change Assessment, which looked at the location and extent of the erodible soft coastline in Scotland, past rates of change, susceptibility and future vulnerability. That was based on comparison um, between the mapped coastline in 1890, 1970 and on modern LIDAR and aerial photography data. It showed that more coast is eroding in the more recent period and that erosion is accelerating, and it also projected those rates forward to 2050. But this is a national scale assessment, so it's quite low resolution in terms of looking at local property and site level impacts. It's also focused on the soft coastlines, which form 19% of the Scottish coast. It was also focused on economic and social assets rather than on heritage specifically. So it's currently in the second phase, focusing in on local sites and areas in more detail, including the iconic site of Scarra Bray. And that is going to take account of accelerating erosion due to climate change and the increased vulnerability that will bring. So I'll be working in a similar way using similar methods to apply some of these techniques to the rich archaeological heritage all over the Scottish coast. In terms of heritage specific vulnerability assessments, Historic Environment Scotland have led with uh, climate change risk assessments for their properties and care and the World Heritage Site of Heart of Neolithic Orkney. However, that's just a drop in the ocean compared to the wealth of other heritage that's at risk all over our coastline. So there's a huge resource of important and valuable sites that are being lost to the sea, along with the valuable scientific information they contain. Because not only do these sites contain stories about our past, but also archives of information about past landscape, past environments, climatic and environmental changes, the impacts of those changes on societies and societal responses. So the sites are inherently valuable in themselves, but also contribute to our understanding of past change, which can inform our modern vulnerability and resilience to contemporary challenges. So the project aim is to take advantage of the new technology and potential of emerging drone-based survey techniques for rapid and cost-effective survey, and apply those to the issue of climate change impact on coastal archaeology. So a lot of my project is going to be based on the work of SCAPE and building upon the existing knowledge of the coastal archaeological resource that's come out of their data set. So at SCAPE, um, from 2012 to 16, we took a citizen science approach to gather an updated snapshot of coastal archaeological sites in terms of gathering condition information and an assessment of the current vulnerability and erosion risk. And that highlighted 145 sites all over Scotland as the most significant and urgently threatened sites that were also valued by local communities. So these are the sites that most desperately need more work to rescue information and more research to be carried out as the sites of the data they contain are being lost to the sea. So that's the data set that's formed the basis of the case studies from our project. So I'm going to be looking probably at about 12 sites, um, which are already known to be significant and threatened thanks to Skate's work. Um, in many of these cases, these sites have historic data that I can build upon, but there are also places where new information can be added. They're distributed all over the coast and in different environments, on a range of different geologies and different geomorphological environments, basically because not all coastlines look like this. 
So I want to look more closely at change and erosion on some of the different types of coast where national models don't reflect what's happening on the ground. So I'm just going to start with a, a quick tour of some of the sites I'll be using just to illustrate the sort of environments I'll be looking at. This isn't, isn't all of them, but just to start on the west coast. This is Balashare on North Eustis, an extensive Iron Age landscape in the Macher dunes. So this is a drone picture from 2018. You can see there's an eroding structure at the base of the section. So this is a coastline that's visibly eroding. Comparison with past aerial photos show um, previous loss. This is a site that lost 50 metres of land in a single storm event in 2005. So we've got old survey data, um, old aerial photos, as well as past drone surveys and photogrammetry models. So I'll be undertaking repeat surveys to quantify that coastal change. But there's also archaeological data to build on. There's a history of investigation of the eroding coast edge here. So escape carried out excavations between 2006 and 10 which uncovered two Iron Age houses. There's also a long-standing project of community monitoring of the remains in the coast edge, but we know there's more there. There's more buried in the hinterland, which is vulnerable but not yet being actively lost to the sea. So I want to widen the focus to the landscape and detect remains that are currently buried but are still vulnerable in order to discover them and investigate them before they're being lost to the sea. Up in Orkney, which is another um, high priority area, we are looking at a very different landscape. So this example is a low rock platform coast with till above, but it's also very vulnerable. And these are the sorts of environments where we find that models can underestimate vulnerability to erosion. This is an extensive site. It's been partially understood through tapestry excavation um, at the coast edge by Historic Environment Scotland, but you can see there are still prehistoric buildings eroding out of the coast. There's also been a recent UHI project here, so there's more data to build on. Then going up to Shetland, um, this is a site on East Borough, which is very little understood. You can see there's a structure here, um, which is half on the beach and half buried behind in the coast edge. This is a story of a very low lying environment, a very low energy environment with inundation by the sea. So there is a structure here. We know nothing about it, even its date. We think it's possibly Norse based on form. But it's a clear mark of past coastal change because there's a house half on the shore outlined in stone where the sediment's been washed away, but the other half is behind the coast edge and still buried. So if we understand better what's going on here, get a date for the site, we can understand better what's going on and actually use this structure as a proxy for past coastal change. Then moving around to the east coast, um, we've got several post medieval industrial landscapes, so sort of coastal infrastructure and industry, but these again are markers of recent change. So this example in Fawdon, we've got a low rocky promontory with the lime kiln on top, which is being destroyed and is slippery in the foreground as well, but it's almost gone. Again, here we've got historic laser scan data for comparison based on a survey that was carried out by SCAPE a few years ago. Then down in Eyknife um, on the Scottish borders, this is a promontory fort and high rocky cliffs. It's a Tudor fort which was fortified by the English during the rough ruling period in the mid-16th century. So this is not the sort of environment that is traditionally deemed to be eroding, but it is eroding badly. We also have past models to build upon. The site's also been partially excavated. And again, there's a fantastic community who really champion and carry out a programme of monitoring of this site. So these are the sorts of environments where models often understate the threat. So I want to look more closely at the processes of erosion and change in these coastlines. So in terms of methodology, I'll be using drone-based photographic survey, including multispectral imaging to prospect for buried features to understand what's buried before it's being actively exposed and destroyed by the sea. So using uh, photogrammetry, I'll build high-resolution three-dimensional models using structure from motion to create digital elevation models and digital terrain models, as well as millimetre after ortho photos, which are important to GIS for analysis and comparison with historic data. You can also look to project uh, future loss and what the impact of acceleration of uh, climate change uh, impacts on the coast might be on some of these sites. So essentially, it's an adapted dynamic coast methodology at a detailed site level using higher resolution site-specific data. So I've only just started data gathering for the project, so I don't have much to show yet. But just to illustrate, um, here's one I made earlier. So this is a snab rock up in Fetland, Shetland. This was an Iron Age rock on the coast. 
that the tower is now being completely lost to erosion. We've got the enclosing earthworks on the landward, on the landward side, which um, survived but have been sectioned by the sea, exposing the ramparts and the ditch fills. So just to illustrate, uh, this is where we think the Brock Tower base would have been. That's sort of what the Brock Tower itself might have looked like. And just to give you a quick visualisation, I have a plonked Musa Brock down on the landscape to give an idea of how the monuments in the landscape would have looked around 1500 years ago. So Scape had a project there in September 19 to clean and record the section, recover samples from the ditches and the ramparts for dating and paleo-environmental analysis. That also included a drone survey. So from that I built a structure for motion three-dimensional model as the basis of the future analysis. So that also updated the historic earthworks surveys um, that mapped the site's current condition and accurately mapped the condition of the coast edge. I then imported that into a GIS for further analysis. So we had an ortho photo, which we validated with a traditional total station earthwork survey and also a digital elevation model. So using that high resolution model, we adapted the dynamic coast methodology to examine the past coastline as recorded in uh, historic surveys. So that allowed us to calculate the rates of erosion over the past 85 years by the monument at different um, time intervals as allowed by the data and at 150 years for the wider coastline around the Brock itself. We also, we also projected the rate of change backwards over 2000 years to inform the potential position of where the coast edge might have been when the Brock was constructed. And at the rates we calculated, we predicted that between 58 and 112 metres of coastline had potentially been lost to erosion since that time. As a check, we plotted that against a marine DEM and against an isostatic adjustment model to look at the relative sea level rise for this area, and both are broadly consistent. So that put the site back in its very different original landscape context and showed the extent of past change, the extent of loss, but also future vulnerability to erosion. Because by projecting that forward, it allowed us to predict the rate of loss by 2050 and 2100 to help inform future archaeological mitigation of this site. And it shows that we're facing the loss of most of the site, as well as that rich archive of information contained in the ramparts and ditches by the end of the century. So one of the questions I want to ask is, can archaeological data like this be used to examine wider impacts and climate change uh, impacts on the coast? Because ultimately, what I'm hoping to understand is whether we can use these sites as nodal observational points distributed around the coast and use these places as really canaries in the coal mine of climate driven coastal change. So as well as uh, resolving some of those scalar issues of national assessments and, and models, we'll hopefully get a toolkit for rapid survey data collection for change analysis that can also be deployed elsewhere in different contexts. And we'll understand some future risk and future vulnerability for sites, but also for coasts and the wider environments, as well as getting a good archaeological outcome for the sites themselves. We'll have models that will form preservation by record, hopefully generate new knowledge for some of these sites and have a baseline for the monitoring of future impacts. So ultimately, what I'm hoping is to contribute towards the mitigation of the impacts of climate change on sites to inform management and prioritisation, and plan intervention strategies at a site-specific level. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'd be delighted to take any questions.